I got it jacked up with a bottle jack and since this is a low profile trailer it's just not a lot of room I had to put it under the axle itself it's the only place I could put a jack wasn't going to fit underneath this beam here but we got it. tires are cleared off the ground I'm going to go ahead and zip these uh, off of there I'm going to use this new Milwaukee what's the number on it 2863 high powered impact and I got a a, uh, a brand new 38 millimeter socket on there this is a half inch drive the three quarter drive normally will take any lug nuts off this one should take them off too but these are already broke loose some of them were over tightened and we're not coming off with any um, three-quarter drive and so I had to use a a, um, a special hand tool of a uh, it's a gear reduce thing I can't think of what it's called right now but my last video has that on it off and then we'll uh, cage the brake uh, chamber got the two tires off of course I'm not going to put this one back on I'll just take it to work and uh, see what the tire guy there can do for me I'm going to put a caging bolt in this this one does have a caging bolt attached to it right right here where my hand is it's uh, screwed in there but I don't know if it'll come out um, I don't know how old this chamber is but the ones that have the serviceable clamp on the parking brake have been outlawed for many many years um, they uh, because people don't do it right they take this clamp off without caging the spring properly to change a uh, diaphragm inside of here and if they don't do it right it can blow up on them and it can do some serious injury and even kill somebody because uh, that spring takes a lot of pressure to to um, well, I don't know how many pounds of pressure is on the spring it's at least a thousand it might be more it might be two thousand pounds of pressure when that spring is totally pulled back and caged so yeah these have been outlawed with this serviceable clamp a long time ago but um, I will take them off and, re and replace them with new ones but not today I'm just taking things apart to find out what I'm gonna need and I just found something I didn't know where it was but here is a leveling valve uh, for this axle and I don't know if it's for all the axles or both of these two axles back here by me or if it's independent I don't know yet I'm learning things about this trailer it was their trailer and I've never been underneath their trailers I had no idea that they didn't do a stitch of maintenance all the eight years that I've been there and this trailer is as old as my truck it's a 97 so I got a lot of work to do on it but uh, let me go on ahead and and try to put this caging bolt that I brought out here in. I'm going to go right in the center and I'm going to keep turning this around till I find a hole that it goes in. I might put the camera down and get my little pocket flashlight out. I might have to do that. I might need two hands to find that uh, the center of that thing but anyway I'm going to find the center of it and I'm going to stick this in the keyhole and turn it and then pull it back out and then it won't turn anymore but I can tighten the, the nut down on it and pull that thing out found the keyhole got my washer on there you gotta have the washer and I'm just gonna go ahead and thread this down and I won't put the impact on it until I get this 
seated because I don't want it to shake loose and fall off of there like it just did. Let me get two hands on it again. I got it on there and I got it started. Now what I'm going to do is set the camera up and you should be able to watch this um, slack adjuster right here and that clevis. You should see that pulling in towards me back here behind the camera. You should see that coming my way as soon as it starts tightening up. I'm going to try to get the camera set up here on the little camera stand. Okay, when you're using an impact, you got to be careful you don't pull this thing back too far because you can break it. So I just did it a few more turns, maybe 10 more threads after it, uh, um, when I saw the slack adjuster stop moving. I didn't want to keep going because I could tear up the inside of this, uh, this um, brake chamber. Now, I learned a new trick. I'm holding the flashlight and the camera at the same time. This particular slack adjuster has a screw here. It does not have a button that you lift up for a ratchet. This one just has a really tight backwards uh, ratcheting system. What I'm going to be watching for now as I back off the slack adjuster is space between the brake shoe. Let me zoom in a little bit. space between the brake shoe which is this part here and the drum which is this part here I'm just going to look for a gap in between there we don't have a gap right now but uh, there will be one when I get the brake backed off and normally you're going to just use a, a uh, like I think it's 7 16 that's the socket size I brought down here with me yeah that fits normally you just use an end wrench I'm going to cheat and use an impact not the big one, just it's just a little 3-8 stubby. Well, I got something a little bit disturbing. We'll find out when I get this apart. But I was watching the bottom shoe. It is not uh, giving me any gap. And I looked up here to watch this cam shaft. And it's rotating. I'll show you how it rotates. See, it's rotating. And then I come over here to see, well, where's my gap? It's all on top. All my gap is on top, so something is wrong. That should not be like that. We'll find out what it is in a minute. See, that should uh, give me a, an equal amount of gap on top and on the bottom. So we'll find out what happened here. this being way underneath the trailer on my truck I didn't never had that problem I had plenty of room but I gotta bend over and try to hit this drum from underneath knock it loose just one hit that was good see why it was doing that there's no return spring no return spring there's supposed to be a big long spring between this top one and this bottom shoe not there okay wonder where that went to Most people 
like to stick a screwdriver right in here or the top part of it and pop these springs off on there's one on each side and then you lift the brake shoe over the front over the top or you pull the bottom one whichever in this case there might be more room underneath I'm not sure um, but since there's no spring on the front since the uh, return spring on the front is missing we should be able to just lift this thing up from the front without popping any of those springs off and shoes just fall right off Now this cam is bad and the bushing this will be my chance to service these bearings too these are these bearings have to uh, be greased I don't think they have liquid grease in them if they do it's all gone because this cap is this cap is uh, gone so this cam is gone they're all that way because this trailer was never greased so I got to replace the cam and the bushings inside this uh, whatever you call this part here I don't know what they're gonna call it <laughs> it's almost like a knuckle on a car but to get the camshaft out no big deal just gotta pull the slack adjuster on this side the cam will come right out I got the little snap ring off and I hung it right here for the time being I'm pretty sure the new um, the new one's going to come with a new snap ring but you know what I did I did one of these cams on someone else's truck a couple of years ago on the steering axle and the steer tires and um, they came with a snap ring but the snap ring did not fit it was the wrong one I had to use the old one so I do not want to use this because I could run, uh, did I say use, I do not want to lose this because I could run into the same situation. I'm going to hit the back end of it with a hammer, but not too hard because I don't want to close the, the uh, area here where the snap ring goes. But I'll tap on that with a hammer and see if it comes out. I don't know yet. I'll figure out how to get this one out. Before I even try to knock this thing out, just looking at this end of it out here by the the cam end of it, I see a keeper right here that I need to get out. See that right there? It goes all the way around. It's going to keep it's going to keep it from going through. So I got to get that off of there first. I'm not going to do that on camera. It's probably just a, tap it with a screwdriver and a hammer. It's moving, but it's tight. It's getting looser, though. Um, I might need to. See, I don't have room to swing a hammer because the other one's right there. So... Um, but it's got a hole in the center from when it was in a lathe being cut. Uh, it's a centering hole. I can use that to kind of catch the corner of something like a socket extension or something and I can try to, or a long pointed uh, punch, and I can try to hammer it out with that. And if it keeps moving fine, if not, I may have to hook onto the outside of it with something and use a slide hammer or whatever we'll see I'm making progress out here just hitting it right here so I'm gonna continue to do that of course I can't get it out all the way I gotta take the hub off all right it came right out just about two more hits and it was out um, but I gotta take the hub off to get, get any farther and that's not going to be a big deal. It better not be. Take these little things off here and I've got some lock nuts. And they're big lock nut. Uh, knock that off with a 
hammer and a screwdriver more than likely. That's how I usually get them off. And I usually put them back on that way, but I catch an awful lot of flack from YouTubers that, that know everything. Because um, I didn't use a, uh, a torque wrench on it. So, anyway, um, let me go ahead and get this thing off of here. Thanks again to Justin Sturgis for this little uh, 3H drive impact from Milwaukee. Real handy for working over here across the street. Now I just tapped this cover with a hammer. It's got a removable outside it just has these little torque screws in it, but it wasn't removed when it went bad. And look, look at all the rust that's in here. So, the guy at my job that works in the shop there, the mechanic, um, he told me that this is going to have solid grease bearings that I'll have to grease by hand. And so, I'm going to go and get, I'm going to use this one for parts, this pan, I'll go get another pan and uh, or a piece of cardboard or something and I'm going to start in a scraper and I'm going to get all this grease off of here because I got a little bit of cleaning to do get that cleaned up I really didn't get a whole lot of grease and stuff off of it but got it cleaned up enough that this is going to be an odd socket it's going to it's got an eight-sided socket and I I mean uh, nut I don't have an eight-sided socket to fit that so I am going to measure the, so uh, the nut and I'm going to try to order a socket for it but it's got another one on the inside that's bigger the one that you use to preload your bearing that one's even bigger um, so in order to, to order those sockets I gotta have the sizes and they certainly won't be here uh, in time to get this thing off of here and take this camshaft to work on Monday so because this is Saturday um, I'm going to do my best to go ahead and, and, and pick this thing off of there like I, like I do with a screwdriver. I'm going to try it first with a small screwdriver and a hammer because that's what I got handy. And if it doesn't work, I'll come back uh, with another something big, bigger from the shop. go get this is got hammer has a plastic handle I'm not getting enough impact on it so I'll be back with something else okay I got a bigger punch with kind of a little bit of a square end on it because that screwdriver kind of started a notch in there for me let's see if this does it something for the little troll food there you guys know who you are this one's just a keeper that locks these two lock nuts together because this one doesn't get um, put on as tight when you're changing um, bearing races new bearings and new races you got to preload this thing really tight to make sure that those races are seated down all the way. But uh, I really caught a lot of flack because the last time I changed the bearing seal on the axle of my truck, I, and I did it on camera, I, um, I didn't preload this really, really tight. I just preloaded it and then backed it off about a quarter turn without doing it super tight because I didn't change the races. All I did was seat the bearings 
uh, and then uh, back it off just a little bit and, and um, put the lock nut on. And I, I caught a lot of flack over that. But it's a real popular video. It's really, it's really um, getting some views. Probably schools have found it and said this is the way not to do it. But, oh well, it pays. Um, anyway, there's a little knob on here and I'm going to tap it but lightly because this is here to lock into any one of these rings on here. This has a, uh, a keyway in it right there. It stays in this groove here and so got to match that up with, with that knob there. So I'm not going to hit that very hard because I don't want to damage it. Look, I don't even have to hit it. It's already loose. So. So that right there would have been seated. They backed it off about an inch. So that's okay, we'll be cleaning this bearing up, getting this dark brown grease off of it. We'll, we'll get that all cleaned up and inspect it real good. And if I don't see any pitting to speak of, on the race and we won't change the bearing in the race we'll just put it back together so this is ready to come off of there There's my camshaft. Got the hub off and it's sitting in this drum here. I have to take the seal out before I can get the bearing out. I already wiped all the grease out of the inside. Got this box full of paper towels. Gonna bring that stuff over to the shop there, unload the wheelbarrow, come back and load it up again with the rest of this stuff. Here's a good reason why you only go down to a quarter inch of padding on your brake shoes. Look here, we're into the metal rivets already. Rivets are into the drums. So, there you go. Actually on both, both shoes, this one too. That'll be it for this part of the video. It'll be a few days before I can do anything else. Well, I mean, I could go to the other side and take the other side off, but I'm going to um, get the parts first. Wasn't that big of a job to take it off. <laughs>